Shalom, this is Sophia, the Ameru Khan Maryam, and this video is a response to um, some questions I heard in a video from Mystic Tarot, Mystic Tori Tarot, um, and this video is going to be about the Golden Age, specifically how the, the Sibyls, the Prophetesses, the Maryams, the Marys, uh, how we are going to usher um, humanity into this golden age. And unknowingly to most of us um, who are kind of in this, um, this, this space, I don't know what you call it exactly, who are able to read the energy and see the energy, we have been propelling people into the next phase um, it's just that it's been cloaked. A lot of it is cloaked. And so it looks like we're not having an effect, but if you know how to read the matrix in a particular way, you can see the effect. So I have to start out by talking a little bit about the ground, the foundation that was laid. When I came onto this side of the, I don't know, this side of mysticism, spirituality from um, anthroposophy, uh, which I had been studying for four years, five, six years actually, um, I was uh, very much um, confused a lot by a lot of what I was seeing and a lot of what I was hearing. And so I did what I always do, which is I took a deep dive into the information to understand exactly what is a Hebrew Israelite? Who who are these people? Why are they quote unquote chosen? Who are the priests? Who are the priestesses? Why are things done this way? Why are things done that way? Just to have a general understanding. And what I discovered um, as I was doing my research was that indeed there were a lot of people who are committed to the lower timeline, as I call the doom loop, which I have a video called the doom loop where I explain exactly what that is using um, astro tarography, uh, the tarot card specifically to explain um, how uh, they, um, the rulers, the principalities, the Leviathan has kept us in this doom loop for all of these years. So once I realized that, um, no, I didn't realize what was going on still. I was just listening to what the spirit was telling me to do. And part of one of the things that we did um, you know, people who were following me and people who were supporting me was that we engaged in three different fasts. Um, and now we're on our fourth fast. The first fast was, um, a 40 day fast that we started, um, on the cross quarter holiday, August the 1st of last year that went from August the 1st until about September the 9th or 10th, which resulted in the removal of Queen Elizabeth. Um, from the scene. And once that happened, it was my feeling that the work was still not done as a, as a result of what fasting is supposed to do um, when you're trying to remove these higher level entities. And so we then had a 22 day fast, which we started on um, the day before or the day Saturn went retrograde, um, which was October the 22nd. And that was a 22 day Daniel fast. And the purpose of that fast was to mourn the loss of the two thirds. We knew that there were a large number of people who had to be removed and we did not know who these people were. We assumed that most of these people were people who look like me because after reading the Bible and inserting the skin color of the characters, there was no denying that the people who crucified our brother Yeshua was a person who looked like our people. And so following that fast, um, we went into a series of um, rituals to cancel contracts. Now, what were these contracts? The first contract that we canceled was the Willie Lynch letter. And that was the day um, that was on was it the day after Christmas? No, the first thing we did was reclaim our inheritance as the daughters of Zion. Let's go, let's go back. The day after Christmas, we reclaimed our inheritance as the daughter of Zion. 
And I was speaking for the Daughters of Zion, not knowing who the Daughters of Zion were, but just understanding that I was a representative at that time and in that space. So the first thing we did was reclaim our inheritance and the temple, the temple being the temple of Solomon, the temple of Solomon being the quote unquote place that we thought held the Ark of the Covenant, which had since been discovered that the Ark of the Covenant is not in the temple of Solomon because in the Kebra Nagus, which is the book of the Ethiopia, Ethiopia being the DC, Maryland, Virginia region where the Ark of the Covenant probably is, um, we were reclaiming the Ark of the Covenant because in the Kebra Nagus, the Ark of the Covenant um, was removed from where Solomon's temple was or there they currently believe that it is and was taken to where Queen Makeda lived with her son David, who was also called the king. So you have to look in your Psalms and wonder whether the story is about David the son of Solomon or David the father of Solomon because they're not clear and that's a whole nother story for another day. So first we reclaimed our inheritance. The second thing that we did, um, I think it was on, was it the same day? No, it was on Christmas day. We canceled the Willie Lynch letter contract. No, it was later on in that week. We canceled the Willie Lynch letter contract. I think that was actually New Year's Eve or something like that. And then on, on New Year's Day, we canceled the Haitian um, independence document. Um, and these videos are on my page, so you can go back and follow along on the timeline. Um, and then we canceled the JP Morgan's 18 steps to something um, someone sent me. And then this process of cancellations culminated when we canceled the Dumb Diverses. Now, the Dumb Diverses was a document that was written by a collective that I call the Tertullian Collective. Um, this collective of individuals or entities, I would rather say, is the, is the representative of the Leviathan, of the Levi Leviathan priesthood. Not Levitical priesthood is really not Levitical as in Levites, is Leviathanites because it is my belief also that the children of the Leviathan usurped the, the name of the, the, the sons of Levi. And they mixed in with them due to the nature of, of the Levites being the ones who were the priests. And so rather than getting mixed up with Judah and all the rest of them, they just mixed in with the Levites because the Levites were the priests. They wanted to take over the priesthood. This is why you have this battle within the church between good priests and bad priests because you have the Leviathanite priests and you have the Levite priests. Um... I just call them the Levitical priesthood because no matter what you say about it, it is a Levitical priesthood, whether you pro pronounce it Leviathanite or Levite. <laughs> They're still talking about the same group of people at this point because they've all joined in on the same team. So once we can, and the Dumb Diverses, as I was um, beginning to mention, is a contract that actually bound Peter and Paul, St. Peter and Paul, who are the the gatekeepers of all gatekeepers to basically every person who killed under the flag of the Roman um, Pope Leviathan church. Um, all of those individuals, when it came time for them to be judged, they would actually be judged as if they had committed no sins. It bound Peter, Paul, um, certainly the Holy Spirit, uh, itself as a separate entity, as well as all of the saints and the martyrs who died from that point forward. It bound them all to the terms of this particular document. And so when all of the saints were martyred, um, when the saints were martyred, in particularly the virgin saints were martyred, they took their body parts, put them in glass like project looking glass and then they would use these body parts to prophesy so that they could know what was going on because within our dna it tells the story the story is in our dna and so they will call their demons in through this tertullian collective to actually prophesy on what was going to happen 
and how they could prepare for it. So they must have known that on this side, there was going to be a time when a person such as I and the sisters that I work with would rise up and we would be trying to take back the kingdom. So what they did was they had us fast on the days that were dedicated to the Pharisees fasting. So fasting for the Leviathan, harvesting all of the energy for that, planting a lot of negativity into our brains so that we would bear the fruit of um, it being Esau's trouble when Jacob and Esau were brothers. And so if it's Esau's trouble, then it's our trouble. They were twins. How can we have, how can it be Jacob's trouble without Esau's trouble? When it was Jacob's trouble, it was indeed Esau's trouble too. And when it's Esau's trouble, it's going to be Jacob's trouble too. And so um, those kind of things were planted into our heads so that that information, those emotions could be harvested and went to feed the Leviathan. So as we canceled those contracts, those things did not work anymore. There's several ways that I have um, intuitively figured out that these things were going on. The number one way is running this information past the sisters that I work with, that we pray together and we fast together and all of that. That's one way. And another way is the response to a person like me coming on the scene. Other people who have come on the scene who are researchers, much like myself, especially spiritual researchers, have received some kind of recognition, some kind of something, even the females, even the males. Everybody who has something to say, when they're brought to the attention of certain individuals, they can seem to get some understanding, some recognition. However, my videos, if you look at them, they still only have 50, 60 views. I don't care about views because I know that speaking into the ley line, being the Maryam that I am, is powerful enough to get things done and it has gotten things done. And the reason I'm making this response is because now it's time for this message to go to a person who can put it onto a larger platform so that the message can spread the way that it needs to be spread. So... When I come on the scene talking about the stuff that I'm talking about, especially the tarot, putting with the astrology, really getting into the astrology, really getting into knowing yourself and how you fit into the astrology. Many of these things were either outright ignored or they were talked over around beside whatever. And, and honestly, it doesn't matter because the people who need readings from me have gotten readings from me. And the people who will need readings from me, they will have to get readings from me because I'm the only person who can diagnose you from your tarot chart. Because no one can even else, no one else can even pull up your tarot chart to diagnose you from your tarot chart. Okay? So this is not like, you know, no one can do this. I can teach people to do it, but they have to be taught. The spirit has to teach you or I have to teach you because no one knows how to do this. This is a entirely new field of study, a new field of research. And I have much documentation that it is that not only does it work, but it's accurate. But the primary finding of my research in this field is that we are unwillingly or unknowingly accepting the terms of the Aquarius age. The Aquarius slice in the chart, um, on the on the astrology chart, if you properly line up the tarot cards, is the Magician card, the Moon card, and the Sun card. This means that the Tertullian Collective, um, you know, backed by the Leviathan, the energy of the Leviathan, because I do believe the Leviathan itself has been removed, but the energy still it has its tentacles out. You know, it hasn't been entirely. It has, it's going to have to be really, really, really deep, clean, removed. Um, and we are asking the most high to do that in a way that preserves as much life as possible because we've seen enough bloodshed. We don't need more bloodshed. So that's one part of it is that we are asking, actively asking for there not to be bloodshed unless it's absolutely necessary. So the terms of the Aquarius timeline, which basically would take us into a time where they can use their sun magic and their moon magic to control us. And so by people continuing to say that we're in the age of Aquarius without knowing what the terms of that contract are, they are unknowingly 
um, putting us back into that contract. And they're convinced they're planting the seeds in people's head that we are in the age of Aquarius. And so I am imploring all readers to stop saying that we are not in the age of Aquarius. You can be in the age of Aquarius if you want to, but please do not tell that to people because it is planning in people's minds that they have to accept the terms of this contract. Whereas the sisters and I have done a great deal of work to reject the terms of that contract because that contract means that their sun magic and their moon magic will continue to work. We believe we are in the age of Leo. We have been in that time period since 1992. I have a video on my tarot timeline jumping um, playlist about how the different time periods work and the cards that are associated with those time periods. Um, and so on the Leo time, if we're on the Leo timeline and have been so since 1992, you will see that we are in the strength card. The strength card has a woman in it and a lion in it. The woman is our sister, um, St. Philomena, who um, I haven't done a video about yet, but this would be the daughter of the Most High. Um, and so that would take too long to explain, but just I will have to do another video on that because that's going to take too long to explain. But this is the daughter. So you have the son. And his counterpart, which is Christ, Jesus, Yeshua, and Mary Magdalene, which was his counterpart. And then you have the daughter. And the daughter is in the strength card. The daughter, Philomena, is there with the Lion of Judah, which is the, the son in his lion form. And she is the one who can tame the son, period. And so being in the Leo time period gives us a lot. It's really the golden age. If you look at any person who talks about when we were in the Leo time period previously, they describe it as the golden age. We are supposed to be in the golden age. This is not really working out the way that it should have as quickly as it should have due to the fact that we're running multiple timelines at once. So there is a timeline for people who stay in the third dimensional whatever that they will be on the the Aquarius timeline those are people who are in the doom loop those are people who are either choosing to be on the doom loop they are um, imprisoned into the doom loop or um, you know they're members of the demonic nine the Levitical priesthood Americaran or the divided kingdom who are not allowed to go on to the higher level timelines but once you have ascended you have access to the higher level timelines and that timeline for us that we have access to is the Leo timeline where in which we are in, like I said, the golden age. That's what the Leo timeline is. It is. It is, it is the golden age. And so it's been a lot of work, um, you know, laying the foundation so that we can be able to walk into the golden age and, and have any sort of impact. This particular time period um, lasts until 2100. However, once you understand the doom loop, you we can also golden age loop. We can go loop from golden age to golden age. We don't have to actually go um, into the lower frequency loops um, if we, you know, if we choose to collectively. But first, we need to collectively reject the Aquarius timeline and say that no, we are not an Aquarius. Or even if you don't want to reject it outright, go and look it up. What does it mean? What does the Aquarius, what does being in the age of Aquarius actually mean? And if you can find two people who agree on what the age of Aquarius is, congratulations. You have found two people who agree, but we know that the most high is very direct and his, his orders are specific. And so just due to the general lack of specificity on what the age of Aquarius is, lets me know that it is not something that comes from a higher frequency or a higher dimension. The higher frequency and the higher dimension is structured. It may be more open and more free, but it is not, more, it is not less structured. It is more structured. You have to follow the steps. There are steps that have to be accomplished. This is how I figured out I was able to modify the tarot spiral from the one that Lord Oseron, um, also on YouTube, had put out and was able to put it into an order that actually made sense with a way of describing things that also made sense and still fit in with the messages that were being passed along. And so pictures don't lie. Energy doesn't lie. However, we have been lied to about what the energies are, what we have agreed to, 
what we did not agree to, what we have options and access to, those things we have been lied about. Another thing I would like to address is this whole concept of um, not being able to get out of our current state. It is true that you will not be able to get out of your current state if you choose to do move. If you do not choose to go into a higher frequency that you actually have access to, you everything will be just ahead of you. You will be just behind that love, that money, that whatever it is, your time, that accomplishment, you will be just behind it. And the reason you will be just behind it is because they are using our ignorance to their advantage. One way you can become less ignorant is to know yourself. The way that you know yourself is to know your chart. Everything you need to know about yourself is in your chart. It's more than just knowing your sun sign. You need to know your sun, you need to know your moon, you need to know your Neptune, you need to know your Mercury, you need to know your Venus star point, you need to know your Mercury star point. It's a lot of points in your chart you need to be aware of. And your Venus star point and your Mercury star point are not even points that anyone talks about. This is stuff that I've picked up from our counterpart astrologers. So just when you, there's no end, I heard one astrologer say that there are over 44,000 points on your chart that can be known, 44,000. So if you don't know your chart and you haven't had a baseline um, understanding of it, which I do, you know, I do offer that as a service, but it doesn't matter if I do it or somebody else does it for you. If you don't know your chart, if you don't know the angels assigned to you, if you don't know the time of day that's best for you, if you don't know your numbers, if you don't know your elements, if you don't know your stones, if you don't know your colors, you don't know anything about yourself. A lot of the problem that people have is that they're watching the tarot and they're looking for the tarot to tell them who they are. I look at the tarot like an energy check, like what's going on in the energy, like a like a news report. I don't watch the news. I get the news from the, the tarot readers because they're telling me the same thing. They're just telling different parts of the story. Some parts of the story overlap with my story and those things I take with I, those things I take for me. Some things don't overlap with my story and I don't take those things. But you will only know what overlaps with your story if you know your, first of all, you got cards associated with every point on your astrology chart. So I know, I know that when the hangman comes out, I need to pay attention. That is a major card in my chart. When the hermit comes out, I need to perk my ears up. When the ten of cups comes out, I need to pay attention. Those are major cards in my chart, major turning point cards in my chart. And because people don't know their own selves, they can't line it up with the tarot. They can't figure out what the message, which messages are for them and which messages are not. The Most High operates in order. It's subtle, but it's in order. But the only way you can figure out the order is if you know yourself, if you've taken the time and done the research on your own chart, your own self. And then you can start to understand the world around you. So people who just mindlessly watch these tarot readings without being able to insert themselves into the story by knowing, hey, okay, she's, she called my card. Uh, she called my X card, my Y card, my whatever card, and then being able to say, oh, this is me about this. This is me about that. You're just watching the readings. You're not able to get the information out of it. I personally love readings from all the different readers that I watch because I'm able to extract huge amounts of information from the readings, even if they are repetitive because it gives me a little piece of information I didn't get on the previous reading because I know who they're talking about. And it's not because the readers are saying, this is the earth sign, this is the water sign. No, it's because I know the people in my life. I know what their cards are. I know what cards my children are. I know what cards my partner is. I know what cards they are. And so, because I know their cards, when you talk about a particular person trying to figure out who this is, who that is, I can say, oh, that's not my story. That's this person's story. That's that person's story. That's because I know my chart. I know my chart in relation to my family and friends. And I do a lot of research and, and you know, just basic understanding of how to understand the cards on the timeline. And then once you know that we have access to this higher timeline, which is the Leo timeline, then you can reject a lot of the stuff that you hear. So I reject 
um, you know, put somebody putting the five of cups energy on me and I can feel when they do it. And when they do it, I reject it. I can reject somebody sending me into the dark night of the soul. Number one, the dark night of the soul is a point in which you feel like God is not there. And then when you're done, you realize that God was there the whole time. So it's not a dark night of the soul. If God, if you don't feel the most high has left you, it's not a dark night of the soul. And what has happened is someone has projected a dark night of the soul onto you, a fake dark night of the soul. But these things you would only know from research. And so, well, I think the readers are doing a great job and I truly appreciate their work. As watchers of tarot readers, we have to do more research. We had, somebody should have said a long time ago, what is, I never heard that term until I started watching tarot readers. And then I was, I never thought to ask, what does that mean? As, as watchers of tarot readers, we have to ask more questions. When they use terms, we have to go and do our own research. So when I read the poem about the dark night of the soul, I was like, oh, okay, this is what the dark night of the soul is. And you can hear that poem in my video um, on St. Therese because she had a dark night of the soul and I would, and it was linked and I went and watched the video. So I would never know what a dark night of the soul is had I not been doing the research of the saints. That's another thing. We should really know who our spiritual team is and to just say our spiritual team is angels, guides, ancestors, that's fine. But you could know who these specific angels, guides and ancestors are because it's in your chart. I have a reading called the celestial, um, celestial angel reading where I go through your chart and I tell you what angels are assigned to you and what they do. And I tell you, you know, I, I, channel, I guess, is what you would call the term. But I tell you how to use them, what you can do to connect with them. Because those things are all important. <laughs> Some people are far more advanced in this ascension journey because we know who we're talking to. Not just what our guardian angel is. Our guardian angel is vastly important. But more important than your guardian angel is your saint. But more important than your saint is the mother. And more important than the mother or, or equal importance of the mother is knowing Yeshua and knowing Philomena. If you don't know your brother and your sister and your mother, you cannot know your father. You're just guessing. You're just guessing. And even if you don't know about the mother, you don't know about the daughter, at least know your brother. There's lots of books written on him, all kinds of pantheons. Everything that mentions the son is talking about him. So you can do lots of research on the sun. You can just look at the sun and the sun will give you the codes. But if you're not doing your research about who you are, where you came from as a child of light, as a child of the most high, as a part of the celestial family, you will never understand what's going on. So it's not enough to just say you're, to just, you know, know your spiritual team. You want to know them. And their, their names are written down on paper. What they can do is written down. I have a whole workbook, Spiritual Light, Spirit Intelligence's workbook, where I go through and I break it down in the charts. I break down the charts and the colors. I break the colors down in, into a bunch of different stuff in that workbook. I have a lot of resources to help people figure this stuff out. Because as I was on this journey, I realized there were going to be people who needed to know this stuff and there was no one who was going to be able to tell them because no one, no one was asking the questions. People were going, I didn't, I came from anthroposophy. Like I keep saying this, but people don't really know what that means. Like anthroposophy is a study of the mother. If you are a mother, the number one thing you want to do is leave instructions for your children to be able to function. And I've been looking for the instructions. A lot of people do anthroposophy. They're just learning about the mother. They never look for the instructions on how to be the child or how to be the mother. Really, when it's your turn to be the matriarch or the patriarch of your family, how do you do that? The mother left lots of instructions in lots of different places and lots of different pantheons. But you have to ask the question. So the number one thing people can do to strengthen their relationship and move themselves forward is ask, what does the perfection of God, the most high, the universe, whatever look like? We have to admit that we do not have a frame of reference for what perfection is. We have no frame of reference. We have no understanding. We have never seen the perfection. And it was pointed out to us honestly because of the interference by the Tertullian Collective and the Leviathan. 
And so until you start asking the question, what does the perfection of the most high look like in this, in that area, you won't get any answers. Matter of fact, you have to ask a lot of questions. You have to ask, what does the perfection of the most high look in my house? What does the perfection of the most high look in my money, in my financial system, or my finances? What does the perfection of the most high look in my look like in my relationships? What does the perfection of the most high look like in my money or in my family? You have to ask all of those questions. And until you can ask all of those questions and you feel like you have answers, like aha moment answer, answers that you can tie back to a book. See, because what happens with me is I get the answer and I'm able to tie that answer to a scripture and I'm able to anchor it because my soul is anchored in the most high, you know? So the Bible is a good reference book for anchoring into the most high. And if you use it like that, then it makes sense. When you use it other types of ways, it doesn't make sense. The Bible is a smart book. It is the number one smart book ever invented. When you read the Bible, if you are not clear to have a higher understanding, you will not get the higher understanding, which is why some people feel like um, these watchers or whatever, they think that we're still back on Revelations 12. Whereas if you've been following me, I'm telling you, we're on Revelation 20. We're, we're on Revelation 20 and 10. We're almost at the end of the book. This thing is over. But if you're on the lower timeline, or you're working on raising your vibration so you can get to the higher timeline, you'll be stuck back at the beginning of the book. Revelation 12 was like the beginning of the book. There's no tribulations, no nothing. We've been through all of that. We've been through the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is that dollar in your pocket. That's almost done. We're, we're, out of, we're, we're coming out of that. And so the Bible is a smart book. When you need a particular scripture, if you've read it, that scripture will pop back up and it'll be just the answer you need. For example, the scripture for this fast. I had never read this scripture before. And then all of a sudden it came. The, the scripture came out of nowhere and it was like, yeah, they have to return everything to us. They have to restore Nehemiah 5 and 11. Restore now to them even this day. Their lands, their vineyards, their olive groves, their houses, also a hundred silver coins of the money and the grain, the new wine and the oil that you have charged them. This is in Nehemiah. And it also says that they were going to have they, these people, the nobles, they returned everything without a fight. Why did they do that? I've been asking that since, I, since we started the fast. I said, why did they do that? They did it because it was something that scared them into doing it. It was something they were more scared of than all of their money. And that is what is happening. You look at this hurricane. When these people find, see that they're going to lose everything and that we're going to have oceanfront property in freaking Arizona, it's going to be a problem. And they're going to willingly hand everything over. We don't have to do anything. And that's the last part of it. We don't have to do anything. There's nothing that we can do to move ourselves forward, to earn salvation, for the most high to come and be with us or not. There's nothing we can do to earn it. All we can do is like Psalm 51 says, the most high likes a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. That's all we can do. We can do nothing else. It is no, it is not our works. It is not our dealing with our shadow, not dealing with our shadow, making these moves, making that moves. None of that is what is going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. Absolutely none of it. There are no works that can get you there. There are no works that can get you in the kingdom of heaven. The works help you to maintain your status. But there are no works that get you there. The most high chooses whom he chooses and he discards whom he discards, period. And so just know if you are on the path of seeking, you have been chosen. And because you've been chosen, you do the works. It's not because the works make you chosen. No, that is what the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. Those people get their rewards here on earth. Our rewards are treasures in heaven and your treasures in heaven do not start to add up until you understand that it is not your works. There are no deeds you can do. 
The only one who accepts deeds and works for salvation is the Leviathan. The Leviathan wants deeds and works. You personally cannot do anything to get your, to, to earn your salvation. It does not work like that. And so we do the works as chosen ones to elevate our status. We've already been chosen. Let's do the work so that we don't have to get the job of coming back on the wheel and doing this thing again until we can deal with all our karma. Let's deal with all our karma so that we can stand before the most high pure. And we don't have all of this dirt and grime on us like, will you accept us? No, we are earning our place. We're not earning a place. We're earning our place. Wherever we are supposed to be, we are earning that place. We are not earning a place in heaven. A place is already made for us. That's what Yeshua came to do. He came to prepare a place for us. The place was this place. Now we have to earn, we have to prepare or earn our place. The, the place has been prepared. Now we have to prepare our place. So if you want your house to be built on sand, if you want your house to be built on river so that'll wash away and you got to rebuild your house, that's fine. But I plan to build my house on the rock. And the only way to build the house on the rock is to deal with my shadow, to deal with my karma, to deal with my family and friends, to deal with what the Most High gave me charge over, to deal, to deal with my kids, to deal with my life, to run the race. If I give up the race, I give up my house. And I have to go back and try to rebuild my house again. That is the point of all of these readings being the same. So you can go back in your mind and say, am I sure I'm, I forgive this person? Because when I hear the stuff that come up in people's readings that people have done to me, I'm like, ooh, child, I wish they hadn't done that. Lord have mercy. That's it. I don't, I don't get have an emotional response to it because I've done the shadow work to deal with what these people have done to me. And yes, it's people that know me that have done these things to me. It's people that I would never suspect that have done these things to me. Why? Because the demon that's attacking me jumps from person to person. So everyone in my life is subject to that demon jumping on them until we build our people up so that we cannot be, we are not habitable, habitable locations for these demons. They're going to jump from person to person. It is everybody in my family, all of them, you know, every kids, everybody. Why? Because the demon just jumps from person to person. I have to identify the spirit that's on them as being a spirit that's not theirs. Now, some of them, the spirit is theirs. Some of them, the spirit is not theirs. I identify that spirit. That spirit's not theirs. Let me send that spirit back to where it came from. We don't have the strength and the power to do that yet. We're developing it, but that's what we have to do. When people do stuff, it's not them. It's the demon that jumps in them. And some of these people, they don't even remember. Somebody did something to me. I asked them about it. They didn't know what I was talking about. That happened a lot of times when I was younger. You know, I would, I was trying to, when I was in my twenties, I was trying to resolve some of my karmic stuff and I would talk to people that had no idea what I was talking about and I could tell in their face they didn't. And that's because it wasn't them. It was a demon that jumped on them. The demon was trying to attack me. So it jumped on the nearest, closest person and that thing attacked me. They don't even remember. And so we have to understand that demons, these demons, these entities, these principalities, they jump from person to person trying to attack us, trying to have us doubt our faith, our building that we built. No, no, no. I don't doubt the house that I built with my father, period. And there's nothing that any of these demons, any of these entities can do to make me doubt the house that I built. Because I'm still here making videos after all we've been through trying to cancel these contracts. These demons attack me relentlessly, relentlessly for nine straight months. It is just now that I'm in my North Node energy for this year that these things are not attacking me as much. And they still are attacking slightly. I can feel it, but it's not really hitting me because I'm in my North Node energy. 
But I only know that I'm in my North Node energy because I know myself. I did my chart. I did my transits. I know what's going on. If I did not know my, oh, here's a good example. I talked to a sister who I had done her chart. And she's like, I don't know why I feel like this. I was like, when are you going to your next card sign? She's like, oh, I don't know. I looked it up. She could feel the transfer from her previous sign her previous transit to her next transit she could actually feel when it happened that's not by coincidence that's because we've been doing we've been studying ourselves and trying to dig into our charts and so that's why you have to have your chart you have to get it read by several people why and people are specialists me i'm a specialist in emotional pain and suffering trying to alleviate emotional trauma i'm a specialist in trying to alleviate that that's what I do. So if you've got emotional trauma that you want relieved, you would see someone like me. Now, if you're trying to do something else, like figure out, you know, how to deal with your past life karma, you may go to a Vedic astrologer. If you're trying to figure out how to get into your abundance, you may go to a Gentile astrologer. Because that's what they do. That's their specialty. So you want to go to the person who specialize in what you need. And eventually you need to get multiple readings. You want multiple readings. And sometimes you have to get people to read your chart twice. Or if, especially if you didn't record it, you want to get them to read it again. Why? Why would you want to get your chart done twice? Because the second time they may see something they didn't see the first time. You weren't ready for that because you hadn't done enough research on your own. So I deal with beginners. Emotional trauma is the hardest trauma to deal with. Because you can't see anything else until you can see past your emotional trauma. But once you can see past your emotional trauma, then you start to understand what's going on in your life. Then you can add your personal chart into the chart of what's going on out here around you. Then you can figure out what's really happening. Like right now, everybody should be in hermit mode. All the planets are in retrograde. Retrograde is when a planet goes up before the most high and the sun through the sun through the sun to the most high to give an account for all the p things that they are in charge of this is a hierarchy these people have jobs and so they have to account for what has been done and because we've canceled these contracts the accounting will be a true accounting this time. That's why this retrograde season is so hard because it's a real retrograde season, which we have not had since at least Christ was born. That was probably the last time we had a real retrograde season where the planets really did the accounting. Now we're having a real retrograde season. Each of these planets have to account for what they're responsible for. Venus is in retrograde until September the 4th. It's got to account for all of these relationships. All of this abuse people have been doing, all this sexual abuse, all this, you know, traumatizing and terrorizing children and, and women and all this stuff. All this stuff has to be accounted for real this time. Because the dumb diverses, once it was enacted, it made Peter and Paul bound to report each person who operated under the dumb diverses as a new person, as a newborn baby. So when it was time to make an accounting, the accountings, there was no paperwork to back it up. Now the planet's got all the paperwork. They have all the spirits, all of the martyrs who these things were done to, they are coming to, to testify, which is why knowing these saints is so important because these are the ones who are going to guide you to your restoration. Because these are the ones who have been assigned to you. Except you, then you didn't have access to them before because they were bound. Because nobody thought, hey, is the Holy Spirit bound or something? Like, something doesn't seem right. Nobody thought of that. Nobody thought, hey, are Peter and Paul really doing their job here? Because why are the righteous winning? Why everywhere we look, the righteous are winning? They're winning because they have been given absolution in advance. So of course they're going to be winning. We are the ones who are paying for all of our sins right away. They have been given forgiveness in advance. If you've been forgiven in, in advance, how many lives is that like living? That's like living a hundred lives because you never have to pay for your sins. 
Now these people have to pay for their sins. And you have access to the absolution given to us through the death of our brother. But if you don't accept it, if you walk away from it, if you ignore the signs, then yeah, you'll never have it. For example, I heard that, did I hear this or did I come to, I don't know. Somehow I heard that one of the problems we've had is that the signs that were for us, all these numerical signs and stuff like that were being hidden. So when the angels were trying to contact us, they could not contact us because everything was being hidden from them, from us, our eyes, the veil was over our eyes. So we could not see all the synchronicities. So once we started to ask the most high and force being able to see the synchronicities, that's when things started to move forward. But what did we do? We had to force our way into it. We had to seek the face of the most high and say, what does your perfection look like? We don't know. I don't think the most high knew how bad it was for us. We were crying out, but our cries were not really being processed correctly because the hierarchy was all jumbled up. Now the hierarchy is all straightened out. Everybody is at their post. Real notes are being taken and really being submitted so that these people can face their real justice. Why would a demon possessed person smile as they gave me an eviction notice unless they were literally demon possessed? Because that demon said, hey, I've been getting away with this stuff for years. I'll always get away with this. Not anymore. Not anymore. There's going to be an actual real price to pay for these people. So you do have to, you do have to love like you've never been hurt. Because everything up to this point, everything up, everything before March the 7th was basically, it didn't happen. It is what Terrell Tory said in her was completely correct. It is like erase everything because everything that happened before March the 7th, 2023 was not real. Life really began on March the 7th, 2023. When we started our new year on March the 18th, 2023, that was the first year that we started. This is when the clock actually started. So you do have to be able to love like you've never been hurt because you have not. According to the records, your physical memory is holding records that no longer exist. Those files have been deleted, but you're holding on to them. So you do have to erase these things give them up, pretend like it never happened because it did not happen. According to the records, it didn't happen because you've been given absolution. That was one of the things that we asked for. And we are still in the midst of fasting. We're fasting for all of the daughters of Zion. We're fasting for all of the children of light. We're not just fasting for us, our little small group. This is a very serious fast and it's been very difficult emotionally. And this is our, what, fourth fast. And we know it's going to take many more fasts in order to really get people on a higher vibration. So another thing that people can do is they need to fast. There's a book. I don't have it in here, but it's on my page. Um, people need to fast. You need to fast and you need to ask God, literally ask him to help you with your problems. And he will have mercy upon you. Everything up to, remember, everything up to March 7th did not happen. It's not real. It was, it was, it, it doesn't, it's not real. And the stuff that's happening now is just the remnants. They're going to have to pay for it. These people are only paying for the stuff that they've done since March. There's, they're not even paying for the stuff they did in the past. They're just paying for the stuff that they did since March. But the stuff that they've done since March is so egregious that it's still going to cost them everything. That's how bad these people are, but they haven't had to face any consequence. They are going to face any co consequence. Now it's no coincidence that these fires, these storms, these things are targeting these places where all of these quote unquote nobles and elites live. It's no coincidence. And don't talk to me about, oh, they're going to buy it up. There's not enough money in the world for them to buy and rebuild in Le 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 in Lili, Leina. 
the real name is Lily. There's not enough. Um, there's there's just not enough. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'll call her back. There's not enough money in the world because it's Hawaii. They don't have the building supplies there. They have to truck in every building supply, every tool that they need, all of that stuff. There's not enough money in the world to rebuild like that. When Hurricane Hillary wipes out the hills or whatever it does, there's not going to be enough money to rebuild Hollywood. There's not. And so we do have to love like we've never been hurt because on record, the most high doesn't see that we've been hurt. We told him we've been hurt, but he couldn't see it because there was no records. The records we do have are the records of the martyrs, which is why you want to identify the martyr, the saint that is your saint. They all, even the martyrs that lived endured torturous amounts of pain and suffering. That those things will be remembered. And so the best thing you can do is identify yourself with a martyr. That's a, that, that, that is what will help you help you heal the trauma of your past and also move forward. Because each one of those beautiful souls is here to guide us. And they want to work with us. As I've been saying, these entities do not want to work with these other people. Even many of the people who claim to be Orthodox don't want to work with them. Because they are not right. They do not do what is right. They do just enough. They are not engaged in the faith in the right way. And they, they have a lot of disdain for these people. And I feel really bad. But it is the truth. It's just what I can clearly see with my own two eyes. And so that's why I started doing my own prayers on here. On my other channel, Ortho Sister. We do our own prayers. We're going to have to build our own religion. And if it's me who's going to be building it brick by brick, that's fine. But the rest of the readers and people who follow readings, I need you guys to reject these contracts. Reject these terms. Don't use terms that people just gave you. Do the research to understand the terms. Don't use the energy that people told you these cards have. They lie. They lie. The energy, when I read the cards, I don't get the energy the same way people do. That's why my readings are way different. And I have readings and whatever on my actual tarography channel, but I'm not, it's, it's not about that. It's about people really understanding that you have to come to your own conclusions. You have to do your own research about all of this stuff. You can't just accept the research in the terms of other people. So thank you. So I think I have rambled on enough about this. I hope that this has been a good response and that it meets people well. I do want people to know how much pain and suffering we've been through for the last few months, but I just hope that it helps to make people um, more determined to, um, to give to the collective, to fast for the collective, to pray for the collective, whether in public or in private, and to, my apologies, and to to do what it takes to raise our vibration as a collective. And it's going to take all of us working individually and eventually together to raise a vibration. So, um, shalom everyone. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you in the next video.